F250, which is also considered the bullnose era, the 80 to 86. This is what a lot of people consider probably the last of the uh, the good trucks, I guess you could say, because it's got you know no headliner, it's got no carpet. This is this is a truck. This is a we're going out to the field, we're doing our work, we're hauling wood. I got a whole bunch of rocks in the back right now and a Mustang exhaust. I mean, we're doing a little bit of work, but this truck has an amazing history and it was used the way that a truck was supposed to be used. Nothing wrong with the newer trucks and all that, you know, they're still being used as they're, as they're intended to be, but this has no luxuries really. I mean, this is a cozy truck. It's comfortable, but it's not like a new truck. It's not quiet. This truck doesn't even have catalytic converters and that is legal. This was a non-catalyst truck in 86. So it's actually got a little rumble to it. It's got a three inch tip on this thing. I haven't looked closely, but I don't know if the whole exhaust is three inch exhaust, but it almost looks like a diesel. And I kind of like it. It looks good. We're gonna get to the whole question in this video. Are these trucks still worth buying in 2023? And we're almost in 2024. So are these trucks still worth buying? These trucks are dirt cheap right now. I picked this truck up for 1500 bucks. It's a 1986 F250 with a 460 and a four speed. And I love it with AC, but the AC doesn't really work. It works a little bit. It might need recharged, might need a new compressor. I haven't gone that far, but I'm using this thing as a truck. This is my trash hauler. This is my go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get my wood. I went to Home Depot and got a door. It wouldn't fit in our Durango. I mean, I'm using it. And if it came down to it, I could haul something with it and not worry about it, other than the brakes are a little, but, um, but right now it does, but it does have the granny gear, which has a top speed of maybe 7.675 miles per hour. So you don't ever use that unless you're like stuck. All right, there we go. So this is just a horrible intersection here. You just can't see either way, my goodness. Top speed of this thing without it creeping up into Fahrenheit is about 55 miles an hour. And even then it still kind of creeps just a little bit, but it's comfortable. It stays like right in the center. And if you hit 55, 60, and it starts to go a little past the center, not horrible. I'm not scared of that. It's still in the normal area. So if you see these trucks on the road, you're like, oh man, that's such an old man truck. Those guys drive so slow, I hate getting behind them. There's a reason. 411's in the back in this four speed. You ain't going over 55. And that's one thing that I would love to do to this truck maybe one day. I've thought about maybe changing it to a 373 and I can get a little bit more RPM uh, for the highway. But I just don't, it's, that's the stir, that's that Sterling 12 volt. And it's just, I don't want to crack it open if I don't have to. And it's just four tens, four elevens, whatever it's got in it. That's cool. I don't want to change it. But the best part of this truck is it is a cruiser. This is a cruising machine. This thing will just, it's not, I mean, it drives like a truck. Don't get me wrong, it drives like a truck. But it's comfortable. My wife will ride in here and she's not uncomfortable. Like if she rides in my Firebird, she hates that thing. She hates my 79 LS Swap Firebird. She hates it. She won't tell me that, but I see her face and I read the expressions and I hear the huffing and puffing. She don't like it. I know it. She'll ride in this thing. This is an ice cream machine. After dinners, right up to the Sonic, the drive-in, go up to the little ice cream stands and stuff, get your little snow cones. That's what this truck is good for, along with hauling 10,000 pounds. But just driving on these back roads, I could do this all day. So let's get into some of these specs. If I remember right, this truck, the 460s had about 185 horsepower and almost 300 foot-pounds of torque. It's a D 
decent for its time. You know, I mean, this is a big block. This is a gas-sucking big block. And this thing, this thing surprisingly, will get out of its own way. That being said, this thing is a gas guzzler. And that's probably the biggest downfall of it all. Probably bigger downfall than, than not being able to go 60 miles an hour comfortably. The best I've gotten out of this was 12 and a half miles to the gallon. And that was just straight doing about 50, 55. No faster, no slower. Back roads really don't like you to see what's around the bends. Get it. Oh, we're going! We're going! That's your zero to 45. Are you impressed yet? Go out and buy you one of these. Seatbelt locked up. We're going so fast. It's like, hold on. This is not a powerhouse. This is a I'm hauling a house truck. <laughs> the exhaust fumes. <laughs> I got exhaust leak. Oh, dear. This does have. 16 inch rims and it almost looks like since this is a 4x4 truck it almost looks like it comes with like a, a 2 inch or even a 4 inch lift from the factory this thing sits pretty good when I sit next to other 2500 trucks that are like brand new this thing blends right in and it's pretty cool also it can tow almost about as much as a new 2500 gas truck and it's pretty cool that these the, the specs really haven't changed throughout the years and this is a good towing rig, other than the brakes are a little, got the drums in the back and the disc in the front, and it stops, but you might have to persuade it a little bit, give it a little pump or two, you know? Now the cool thing about these trucks, not only in the F-250, but with the F-150 and the F-350, there are so many options that you can do with these trucks. You can have the C6 automatic, you can have the AOD, you can have the four speed, also, with that many options of transmissions, you know, you can obviously get a, a four-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive truck and all the trims, but you had the inline six, the, the, the famous inline six 300, which was pretty much bulletproof, and I'm going to say it, probably one of the best engines ever built, indestructible, love those. Six in a row, ready to tow. You know what I'm coming from. Then you had the 5 liter, the 302. They made those forever. Extremely reliable. Until you had a lot of power. And a lot of power, I mean like 600 horsepower. You can get it out of it. After the 5 liter, you can get a 351 Windsor. Which is also another great engine just the high deck the, t the tall deck 302 is basically all it was another reliable engine on top of that you got the big block territory you got the 460 the 7.5 liter which is what it's in this truck then the next one is such a hit or miss some people love them some people hate them the 6.9 idi the 6.9 diesel me personally i've never had any experience with those but going to the junkyard, I sure do see quite a few of them. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. But, it's either that or the five liters. Those two. It's typically what I see at junkyards. Oh, keep it in the mustard and mayo. There you go. The price point for one of these right now that's like a pristine condition that I've seen. I look on like the marketplace and the Craigslist and all of those. I see them around like five to fifteen for a decent one. That to me is pretty cheap. Now what's even better if you like projects like also myself, I see these going all day long, eight hundred bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, two thousand dollars. And once you get into like the, the $1,500 to $2,000 range, most of them run and drive. And they need just little things here and there. Like, 
AC doesn't work, needs brake work, uh, transmission won't shift in the third or something like that. And there goes another one. I'm doing 55. Just go around. Uh, tell you what, man. He's a speed demons around here. There you go. You can pass. Go, 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 go. He ain't gonna do it. Comparing to C10s, Silverados, the, uh, the the early 70s, the late 60s, early 70s Chevys to even up to your square body, 73 up to 86, 87, whenever they switched them up. Those trucks are not hard to find, like these, but their price points are a bit higher than these. And a lot of the same thing, you can get your small blocks and your big blocks in them, four speeds, automatics, four speeds, three speeds, you know, all that stuff, just like these trucks. But those trucks' values hold just a little bit more than the Fords do. Especially if you find like a, a 3500 with a 454 and a four speed crew cab dually, my goodness. Keep your eyes peeled for one of those, fellas, because I am wanting one of those so bad. But again, you can still find those fairly cheap, but not as cheap as a 460 truck, like this one here. And also with the Dodges. Can't forget about the Dodges. You find the D-150s and the D-250s, and you can find those all day long. Those actually might be cheaper than the Fords. You find those all day long, 318s and them, slant sixes. Find them for 1,800 bucks, 1,500 bucks, running and driving, still. I think that's a great deal. I wouldn't mind having one one day. But I want to get the cool stuff first. Oh, sorry, Dodge guys. Sorry, Pops. I want to get the cool stuff first. So I got my big block truck with the four speed. I got my eyes peeled for a Chevrolet with the big block. Full 54 and a four speed. Four foes. Is that what? Is that what? Is that what Mike Jones planned? Popo, still riding the popo, smoke at the popo speed. Still tipping on the popo, grabbing the popo. My goodness, how fast do I have to go? These people. I'm just cruising around. I just, this truck is just so much fun to drive. And I'm about to head up on a road that's 55. You know, if, if, the, if where you live is anything like where I live, 55 means 85. about what people think of you. 
the sooner you don't care about what anybody thinks of you or what you're doing, the happier you'll be. Who cares? I love this thing. I love driving this thing just to piss the people off in the city. I love driving this thing just to get the pissy comments at my work. And I just look at them and smile. I just... I tell you what, I smile with my crooked teeth and all. I belong out here. And ain't nobody know how gonna tell me no half difference. So this, I guess you could say, is kind of the introduction of this truck on the channel. This is my $1,500 truck. 460 and the four speed with four wheel peel and we got some goodies for it I got something I want to do to the paint I've never done it but I'm gonna try it I want to do something to the wheels and I want to do something to the exhaust so this is all just budget stuff let's keep this under a couple hundred bucks no break in the bank this is just a cheap truck so I'm gonna end it up right there what do you guys think are these Ford Bullnoses still worth buying in 2023? Price point seems right. They got good engines. You can do a lot to them. Great transmissions for the most part. Styling, hit or miss. Some people love them, some people hate them. There are definitely better trucks out there, I'm going to admit that. But, for the price point and what you get, you guys let me know. So if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Take it easy.